Good morning. On behalf of George and all the Weiner family, I want to welcome you here to Holy Innocence. I know your presence here means so much to the whole family. And what we do here together should unite us and make us one in giving thanks for this wonderful woman, in praising God for the gift that she was to each one here, and supporting one another in this time of grief. We come together to do three very important things. And the first is to give thanks to God for the gift of Anne's life, and for the way that she touched so many. And secondly, we come together to ask the Lord to strengthen our faith in the resurrection, that all those who die in the Lord will live in the Lord. And thirdly, we ask the Lord to console us, to wipe away our tears, and to strengthen our faith, that we might one day see her and be reunited with her in heaven. I want to say a special word of welcome to those who may not be in the Catholic faith. It's so good that you are here, and what we do together should make us one and help us to support one another. And we're very glad of your presence. And so let us turn to the Lord and let us prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our faults and feelings and the Lord's great mercy. Christ is risen from the dead, destroying death by his death, and on those in the grave bestowing life. Hear ye the song. Hear ye song. Christ is risen from the dead, destroying death by his death, and on those in the grave he's going on. Christ the like song. Christ the song. Christ is risen from the dead, destroying death by his death, and on those in the grave he's going on. Hear ye the song. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy. We humbly implore you for your servant Anne, whom you have called to journey to you, and said she hoped and believed you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland, to delight and everlasting joy. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite us now to please be seated as we listen to the readings from the Word of God.
letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was dead, raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
so many ways over these last few years with Anne's illness. Real tribute to how God's love was implanted in Anne and passed on to you, and you returned it to her in just a wonderful way of your love and care for her. It gives us a wonderful example of what it is to come together as a family and uh, what's a wonderful grace to us all. And so on behalf of this community here at Holy Innocence, we want to extend to you, George, and to all of you our deepest condolences uh, at the loss of Anne. Anne was such a part of this place and uh, so deeply loved here. And of course, you, George, and Anne uh, helped build this place, this church that kind of looks across the valley at your place across the way. And we're so very grateful for all you've done to help build up this place. Not only the building, but the community, the faith. And your friends, in St. John's account of the morning of the resurrection of the Lord, after Mary Magdalene discovers that the tomb is empty, she runs into Jesus, but she doesn't recognize him. Instead, she mistakes the risen Lord Jesus for the gardener. And certainly Mary can be forgiven for not recognizing Jesus uh, for all that was going on that morning, for her shock at the empty tomb, and for thinking that he was the gardener, for indeed the tomb was in the midst of an old quarry that had become a gardener. But Mary Magdalene's recognition of Jesus as the gardener, well, in that there was indeed truth. In truth, there is no mistake that that Lord Jesus is, in fact, the gardener. Indeed, the master gardener. In fact, the Lord of the garden. The one who, out of nothing, even out of nothing, brings forth life and love, and even out of death, brings forth resurrection and new life, and offers that to us. That might be God calling, reminding of us that in fact. <laughs> the fact is the Lord brings forth life and love out of even the most difficult situations. And the Lord teaches us even how ourselves how to share in that. And that is why we are here today. <coughs> We're here today because, first of all, God gave life to Anne and gave her a gift to us all. And to give thanks for the gift of her life gift of life that we have in Anne. As the Psalms put it, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We're knit together by God in our mother's womb. We're created in the image and likeness of God. And we are made beloved children of God and incorporated into God's family at our baptism and anointed with that spirit of confirmation. Anne experienced all these things, and she was a woman of great faith, who knew who she was, that she was a child of God, created in his image and likeness, and redeemed and loved by God, and that she had been given a mission to nurture and pass on the gift of life and love that she had received from the Lord, to pay it forward, if you will. And that recipe, if you will, for how to live and how to love is really given to us by the Beatitudes. That gospel we heard today was really written in her heart. And she passed it on. And you all here are attested to the way she passed it on. One of the reasons I began with the image of Jesus as the gardener is that Anne loved to garden. 
family told me how much she loved her flowers, her roses, and uh, I just had to smile as uh, the family brought in the roses and as they became piled high next to her urn and because that was the kind of gardener she was, bringing forth all that beauty and all that love really symbolized by all of you. She loved her flowers and she loved her gardening and it brought her great joy. But in a sense, gardening was what she did all her life. And you know, it involves cultivating soil, planting seeds, fertilizing or nurturing the plants, pruning and weeding and shaping and watering and tending, all with a kind of a sense of dependence on the one who's the source of it all, who gives the rain, who gives the sun, and the growth. She cooperated with what God gave her to bring forth what God desires to bring out of the ground. And she did that in her relationship with her beloved husband of some 62 years, George. She did that in her nurturing and raising and counseling and being an ear to her children and grandchildren. She did that in her friendships and uh, the Bible study here, um, in her involvement in, at St. Louise and building up this church over the years. She did it in her love of people and in her humble, quiet, and sometimes meek way. She gardened not only in her yard, but in the field of the Lord. So today we give thanks for what God did in and through her. But more than that, we give thanks for the resurrection of new life promised to her and to all who love God. See, Jesus shows us a pattern for living and for dying and for love and for rising. And as St. Paul puts in the second reading, those who die in the Lord will also live in the Lord. That when we Live into the Paschal mystery. That means dying to self and living for God and living for others. If we live in that pattern of life, then we'll share the new life and resurrection that the Lord promises and offers to us all. And so what I invite us to do today is to do two things. Pray for Anne that she might enter into the promises of Christ that she lived out so well in her life. And then to ask her and her life to show us the way to live and to love. Let her life nurture our faith and our hope, both in the way that we love and the way we live. For Jesus, the ultimate gardener, holds out the promise of new life bursting forth. When we look at things in winter, everything looks foul, almost dead. But in the springtime, God causes new life to bring forth, to burst forth. From the death of the crucifixion, Jesus burst forth from the tomb. And he shares that new life with all who believe in him. Anne believed in Christ and his promises with all her heart and soul and being. And she used the grace that she was given to tend the part of the garden entrusted to her. He lived, he lived his life for us, and she lived out her faith in the one who is the source of all life and love. And she invites us to believe too in the one who is the master gardener and the new life and hope for us all.
in the book of the prophet Isaiah, which we heard as the first reading. The Lord says through Isaiah, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. He will destroy death forever and wipe away the tears from all faces. He will save us and give us new life. But is that not in the Lord? Well, it is the place wherever God is, and God is everywhere. And it is even that place where her new home was built, that little mountain there, where she lived her last days. And even in that place, the Lord brings his new life and hope, destroys death forever, and gives new life and resurrection to all who love God. Please stand. Dear sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. To each of these implications, we invite you to please respond or hear our prayer. War, hear our We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Anne. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. War, hear our prayer. Our sister Anne was nourished at the table of the Lord. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Anne, that they may seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness of the doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who ministered to Anne during her illness, that they may be blessed in abundance with God's love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us with whom Anne so generously shared her gifts, may we too grow in the ability to share our gifts and lighten the burdens of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who loved and were loved by Anne, that we may find comfort in our belief in the Lord's promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers, we hold in the silence of our hearts.
We pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, we hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ. Grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now please be seated as we bring forth the <coughs> simple gifts of bread and wine, thanksgiving for the gift of man's life, and for the gift of the promise of eternal life. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty, and the Holy Father. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Anne, beseech your mercy, that she who did not doubt her son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank 
sown by the promise of immortality to have come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed on heaven, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for the heaven heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of the heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we need In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink them. This is the chalice of my life, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of him. Yeah. 
to heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the holy innocents, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing life. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray over advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Paul our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Anne, you have pulled from this world to your son. Grant that she who is united with your son in the death like this may also be one with him in his resurrection. From the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly one after the pattern of his own glorious heart. To our departed brothers and sisters, to and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, be kind and goodness to your kingdom. There we hope.